My organization gets about 600 claims a year, and so we run about a 97 reject percent uh, rejection rate, and right. that can be rejection for many reasons. From uh, they're not claiming complete innocence, so if they're claiming some reduced level of culpability, that's not innocence. If right. they were at the robbery but they didn't know someone was going to be killed, that's not innocence. Um, uh, all the evidence maybe was presented at trial in a he said, she said type situation. So we're looking for some type of new evidence that was not heard by a jury or a judge in some, even a post-conviction hearing. Is there a thread that runs through these cases? I know they're all different, but are there common things that you, you seem to find when there has been a, a, a wrongful conviction? Oh, there's absolutely threads, mm -hmm. and those have been identified nationally, uh, very consistent, um, and they're consistent in, in DNA exoneration cases and non-DNA exoneration cases. So uh, misidentification, the human mind is not a recorder, so uh, we, are, um, uh, we have flawed memories. And, and I think the word human uh, comes into play in a lot of things. So tunnel vision, the way an officer might investigate a case, they have biases, unintentional or even intentional, that can cause the investigation to go down the wrong tunnel. Uh, false confessions, uh, we, we see that in Henry McCollum's and Leon Brown's case. We have another exoneration case in North Carolina, Keith Brown, where there was a false confession. Um, uh, flawed science, and that can sometimes happen because the science hasn't been thoroughly tested, but it also can happen again because of the human bias factor.